everyone. A very good afternoon and a warm welcome to this session. Today we are here to talk about the Bachelor of Design program at Flame. So as we all know over the years, the concept of design has far grown from being just creative to being more human centric and it keeps evolving. So this calls for a holistic design education that aids an individual to pace up and be responsive in this very dynamic industry. And for the same, Flame University introduces the Bachelor of Design BDES program that offers an interdisciplinary graduate, undergraduate degree rooted in liberal education centered around experienced design. And it prepares you for a fulfilling career in various fields like designing technology driven human experiences, digital and interactive interfaces, tangible interfaces, different forms of immersive storytelling, service design, and a lot, lot more. And to discuss about the same in further detail, we have Professor Amit Kundal here today. He is the Associate Professor and Associate Dean of the Faculty of Design, Art and Performance at the Flame University. And he has received his doctorate degree in Human-Centered Design and Master of Design from IIT Kanpur and his undergraduate degree from Design in Design from NIFT Gandhinagar. Uh, he has over 10 years of experience in design and academia. He has also been an associate professor at ISDI Mumbai, where he led the School of Product and Strategic Innovation as an associate dean. He was associated with the Asmara International and Lee and Fung International Private Limited as a designer and is also the co-founder at Studio 23. Oh, that's a lot, sir. And uh, his passion and current work spans across design research, reimagining user journeys, identifying design and business innovation tools for strategic design innovation. Apart from that, he's also actively involved with the global design thinking, thinking movement. And lately, he has been writing about the intersection of design and hands-on research practice, where he is also has numerous research papers published under his name. So I'll be handing over the session to him. But before I do that, I would like to introduce our very own Ms. Anju Deoskar. She is the Director of Admissions and Outreach at the under, of Undergraduate at Flame University. So welcome, ma'am. Welcome, sir, here. And Thank you. Uh, and let me introduce Anishka. She's our uh, student and uh, she's also a student ambassador. She works as a student ambassador in, um, in uh, the university internally. And absolutely amazing, uh, uh, very, very evolved learner, I would say. Thank, Thank you. you, Anishka, for being with us on a Saturday afternoon. Sure, ma'am. That's my pleasure. Thank you so okay. much, Anishka. Thank you. Sure, so thank you for, you know, being here. I'm sure it is going to be a very insightful session. Just a short note before we begin for the audience. So please feel free to put in your questions in the chat or the question answer box. All of them will be answered live at the end of the session because there are high chances a lot of your questions might be answered as the talk progresses itself. And because we also have Anju ma'am here, you can also put in your questions about admissions, the process and all of that apart from the design factor as well. Uh -huh. So over to you, sir. So we'll keep the uh, admission related questions for the end of the session. Yes. We designated some time for that, but let's hear the, uh, by, you know, the bachelors of design at Flame from uh, the associate dean of the design school at Flame University, Professor Amit Kundal. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us. Thank you. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes but you'll have to uh, make it uh, full. Yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, I'm doing that. One second. All right, okay. All right, uh, visible? Yes. All right, okay, cool. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for joining us today. I think on a Saturday afternoon, you all coming in numbers and you know showing your interest in design that itself is a you know very good news for us. So thank you so much. Before I begin, I will set a little context to what this presentation is going to be about. In this presentation, what I'm going to cover, I'm going to talk about the BDES program that we have started at Flame University. I'm going to talk about the inception of the BDES program. I'm going to talk about a few highlights of the BDES program. And I'll also talk about some of the subjects that you will be covering, some career opportunities post this. And I'll also show you some of the student work at the end of the program. 
Okay. So when we started thinking about the BDES program, there were two options that we had. The first option was that let's look at any successful design curriculum, right? And then probably, you know, just try to replicate that at Flame. The second option was that why don't we kind of reimagine the design education journey totally and we start and we think about design education from the scratch. Of course, you will look at what is currently happening, and we did look at that. We looked, looked at all different kinds of design schools from India to globally, benchmarked their curriculum, spoke to a lot of faculty from those design schools. I mean, we're, we're talking about design schools, not only in India, in, in North America, in Europe, in Australia, everywhere we were trying to see that, okay, what is it that is currently happening in the design school? And then we also spoke to a lot of people. We spoke to a lot of industry experts. We spoke to approximately 50 plus industry experts. We spoke to 20 plus academicians. We spoke to a lot of students who are currently studying design in different design schools, students who have studied in India, studied abroad, just to understand what's the difference in terms of education and what is happening. Some of the names that we spoke to are highlighted here, and all of them are like director and vice president of design at top design companies. Like, you know, you can talk about Tata Digital, you can talk about TCS, Walmart, you know, Lollipop Design. We spoke to so many people based on these, these conversations that we had, and they were long conversations. These were like two hour conversation each. The idea was to understand that, okay, what is it that is happening in the design world in the industry? What is it the industry perceives as a gap in terms of what's happening in the institutes? And where is the design looking ahead in the future? And based on those conversations, this is what we came to. We said, okay, let's summarize what we found. So we found there are six kind of qualities or attributes that an ideal designer should have, which is about mindful ownership, which is about the designer should be able to make and do. At the end of the day, design is a field of making, right? So they need to be brilliant at making and doing. They need to probably be very passionate storytellers. They need to kind of, you know, communicate those ideas with, with a lot of passion. They need not, not only be cross collaborators, but they need to be cross pollinators. And I'll come to what is cross pollinators a little later in my slide. They need to kind of embrace ambiguity and also look at problem as an opportunity and identify patterns and identify insights rather than you know directly jumping into the solutions. So these conversations also led us to understand the new new age design is looking at four main pillars. So design is talking about four pillars and that's where the world of design is looking forward, which is about, of course, making and doing because that's integral and critical to design. Second is to do anything which is making for someone, you need to understand. We always talk about human-centered design. We talk about user-centered design. But what is human-centered design and user-centered design without understanding humanity? So hence, psychology and sociology specifically cognitive behavior, behavior understanding, people understanding becomes a very, very integral part to design because you cannot really design something without really understanding the ecosystems of humans or humanity in general. And the fourth, third pillar is about business because design is a discipline of innovation and unless and until you can have a skill set to take your ideas to the market, you are really not innovating. So business is absolutely critical to design. And the last one, and one of the most important ones, is to look at technology, right? Because most of design solutions these days are actually technology dependent. So understanding of technology is also very, very critical for designers, specifically data and immersive media. So these are the four pillars of design that are emerging in the discipline of design. And then when we look at Flame as a university, we feel and we know that these are already the strengths that we have. We are a liberal education university. That means our human behavior questions, our psychology and sociology as a pillar is absolutely sorted. We have a very brilliant school of business. That means our business pillar is also absolutely sorted. Now we also have a school of computing and data sciences, which means that our technology pillar is also absolutely sorted. Right. All we need to do is to introduce something on making and doing and, you know, a maker's lab or something that you do for design skills and integrate all of this. So we already have an ecosystem of things in the university to actually where design could just flourish. 
So what is our BTS program? It's an interdisciplinary undergraduate program which draws courses from design, technology, uh, management, and liberal education. The idea is that we want to create something where designers not only create impactful products, but also kind of radiate knowledge because they should be able to tell people that what they have done. It's just not about creating a product. It's also about kind of communicating on the, about that product so that people really know what you have made. So let's talk a little bit about what the curriculum of this would look like. 50 to 60% courses will be your design courses. You'll have, you know, sorry, one second, one second, one second. All right. So uh, 50 to 60% courses will be your core design courses. 10% courses will be from the management domain. 15 to 20% courses, courses will be from technology side. And you'll also have 10% courses from psychology. I'll also come to some of those subjects and list of subjects in my uh, subsequent slides. But there is a 10% component, which is a, which is, let's say, is the current USP of the liberal education program at Claim is the experiential learning program. For example, we have something called the Discover India program. All students are mandatorily have to attend their program, which is more about kind of, you know, forming a group with different pool of people, people from different disciplines, and going to one part of the country and exploring, understanding one aspect of it. It could be technology, it could be social, it could be about art, literature, culture, textiles, whatever that group wants to study. We're also saying that if you at flame what the designers we will we will produce or the students who will graduate will be a pie shaped designer and not a t shaped designer traditionally everyone talks about a t shaped designer where they say there is a broad range of understanding that we have and we have one depth in one field of design right or one field of expertise what we are saying is that you will have a holistic liberal education overview because you have a common foundation program You'll have one leg, which is a major in experience design. We're calling it experience design. Uh, but parallelly, you'll also have, have a minor in a complementary subject. Let's, for example, you could have a major in experience design and you will have a minor in psychology or you'll have a minor in, let's say, business analytics or you'll have a minor in marketing or you'll have a minor in management, right? So BDES experience design at Flame University is a combination of human behavior, being a maker and a doer, understanding the business and management aspect of it, and also kind of knowing what technology goes behind building products. Plus, you will have minor possibilities of five options, which is psychology, entrepreneurship, business analytics, marketing, LCS means literature and cultural studies. Look at some of the subjects that we're going to offer. I'm not going to get into what is going to be offered in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, but this is the overall bucket of subjects that you will be going through in your four years of tenure here. So look at the kind of technology subjects we'll offer. We'll offer you something on data and design, immersive media, understanding of ML and AI. We'll talk about business of design, service design in business part of things. We'll talk about behavior design. We'll talk about storytelling and scenarios. We'll talk about cognitive design. And of course, there are core design subjects which will also run like UX, design thinking, interaction design, drawing comics, or speculative design. All of those things will also run parallelly. We are not going to only offer you subjects because we believe that a lot of design has to be learned from people outside the academic world, which means we want to integrate a lot of these in industry interactions into the program. So we, we, we are planning to offer approximately three among these workshops every semester, right? So over a period of four years, you will have approximately about 20 to 24 workshops, which is a short burst of you know, impactful sessions that top industry experts come and take in terms of exposing you to new and upcoming topics in the field of design. So for example, you might have a workshop on something like motion design. You might have a workshop on something like metaverse. You'll have a workshop on something like biomimicry, copywriting and content, inclusive design, zero UI, storyboarding, color fundamentals, and many more. After graduating from this course, 
these are the possible career options. And if you look at LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn has a report recently published which says that you know design is one of the top five you know skilled areas which is which people are looking forward to, right? It's in the top five skill set, right? That that is required for the future industry. So the kind of careers that you will have. You could become a design researcher. You could become an interaction designer, design thinker, product designer, UX designer, UI designer, service designer, experience designer, and of course, lot many of you will probably also end up becoming an entrepreneur. So, what is our entry entry criteria? Entry criteria is that either you could have we qualified a UC or a design aptitude test, or you appear for the FDAT uh, examination, which is our claim. aptitude plus a design aptitude test followed by an interview portfolio is an optional thing for us we believe that you know you don't need to have a portfolio before you come to the design school portfolio is an outcome of a design school you'll come to design school essentially to create a portfolio to progress in life right and of course if i want to understand anything in terms of your aptitude your skill set that we can look at the design aptitude and see and also we will ask you questions in interview which will clarify that for us so portfolio is an optional thing if you have it we are more than happy and welcome to see it if not we are happy to have a conversation about the kind of work that you've done in the past so before i go ahead i'm going to what i'm going to do i'm going to show you some of the student work or some of the work as an example for you to see that okay what is the kind of work that will happen if we join this program show you some more
this was a very interesting project. Uh, I'm sure all of you know about Kone as the elevator manufacturing company. Kone is one of the largest elevator manufacturers in the world based out of Helsinki in Finland. So they came to us asking that, okay, can you kind of in your classrooms imagine that what could be future of elevators? Because if you look at it, uh, buildings have grown taller and taller, but there not has been any major change in the mechanism of elevators. Right, so this project was done in collaboration with uh, Alto University in Helsinki. So four of my students and four students were working on doing this project and this is what they created. And there is probably, probably there is a service around it, right? So I cannot say that, okay, this is done by a product designer. Of course, there is product design skill set. I cannot say it's done by a UX designer. Of course, there's a UX design skill set. I cannot say that it's done by a service designer. Of course, there's a service design skill set, right? This is that ecosystem of connecting these different things, which is a physical product or a digital, let's say, an interface or a encompassing service or a business model, that is what is generating a new experience. And that is what we call as experience design. If you look at Apple, Apple is a connected ecosystem of products. And that's what makes me kind of, you know, want to use Apple again and again. I'll show you one more example at the last, uh, which is one of my favorite projects. This is Vidya. Vidya has been struggling for the past two years to learn how to read and write in opposite directions. She's not alone in her fight for literacy. In developed countries, they have high-tech e-brailers that support a digital interface. But for students like Divya in developing countries, they're not accessible to such high-tech and modern equipment. They use a basic stylus and slate that forces them to exert pressure while also having to struggle trying to learn the script in two different forms. लेकिन यहाँ पे हम देखेंगे कि ब्रेलर बहुत ही महंगा पड़ता है बच्चों को 
थर्टी एट थाउजेंड अभी रनिंग में उनकी कॉस्ट है और हमारे बच्चे में गरीब भावों से आए हुए हैं तो ये बच्चे हायर नहीं कर पाते चैलेंजेस डोंट एंड देयर These students are completely dependent on writers to write their exams for them. I had very bad experience, unpleasant experience when I had uh, gone for uh, uh, asked for them to give me a reader and time extension for my children. They weren't satisfied with the JJ Hospital certificate of disability, so they made me uh, write a paragraph so that I may not, uh, you know, like write her paper. In two thousand seventeen, four product designs. to cap the challenge to design a writing aid that would bridge the unseen gap between the sighted and the non-sighted after 6 months of research and development on field work and dozens of iterations bridge was conceived the user testing was a great success it was a truly humbling response bridge includes a pen a pad and a scanner The pen uses an innovative technology that combines photopolymerization and a unique dot restriction mechanism that creates 3D dots on any kind of paper. The unique six-button system maintains their mental model of the Braille script. The pad is just like any other, only with a simplified version of their current stencil. Furthermore, the writing aid includes a detachable overhead scanner. This has an inbuilt software to convert the written Braille document to any desired language, finally making it a printable document. Fraction of the price of the e-Brailler, Bridge offers extremely high value for low price. मतलब मुझे तो लगता है हर स्कूल में नहीं हर बच्चे के पास रहना चाहिए ये. कि मैं ब्लाइंड बच्चे के लिए मतलब इतना सोच रहे हो आप? तो ये सब बातें हैं जिसे होता है इसलिए मेरे आ, मुझे तो लगा कि ये जो अब ये कर रहे हैं कि हम पेन से अपने आप की लिपि ढूंढ सके या लिख सके मेरे लिए बहुत या बच्चों के लिए बहुत वरदान साबित हो जाए doesn't just help the student community it also helps blind people all over the world who do not have access to a computer they face various challenges with written communication and bridge is the answer to these challenges to see to feel to bridge all right okay so i hope you uh, like this product but to make a product like that right there are same things that we need to understand as designers if i didn't understand if the students don't understand that child psychology they will not be able to make this if the students really don't understand little bit of technology how things can be you know tinkered with and you know what can you convert doing something a b c they will not be able to make this if the students don't have the habit of actually you know making something happen making trying failing and then making again they will not be able to do this at the end if students really don't have the understanding of the management and the business acumen they might never be able to take it to the market right so that's where we are talking about those four pillars of design which is design making and doing psychology understanding human behavior which is about management or having a business acumen and also understanding technology and if you you know anyone who understands flame as a university would know that these are already you know top strength of our university going ahead so what's our key value proposition what we are saying is that we 
ERS School of Design, which is founded in liberal education, because we are truly in that sense the human-centered design. We are the design school, which is offering a major and a minor combination. You're not only saying that you're going to become a designer. You're going to become a designer, but you'll also become like a minor in psychology. You'll also probably have a minor in management or in marketing or in validating. We want to create pie-shaped designers. And imagine there are 30 of these pies with design as a specialization and something else as a minor working in one classroom and doing projects like that. You know, I can see only wonders happening. We want to create reflective practitioners. We want designers to kind of think very carefully about what they are doing, write about it, and also kind of document the process of thinking because that's very, very important. We want our designers to be makers and doers, and that's why we are building a very state-of-the-art, approximately about 4,000 square feet of maker space for the 50 designers who are going to join us for the first cohort. We want students to kind of, you know, deep dive into the discipline and understand the ethos of design from ground up. So we've been talking to a lot of people. We've been kind of, you know, because a lot of people have uh, come ahead, come forward to help us. And one of those persons who has come forward to help us is Professor Don Norman. Uh, anyone who has a little bit of, you know, connection with the design world would know who Professor Don Norman is. He doesn't need any introduction. He is also referred to as the father of modern day design. He is the person who actually was the first user experience architect at Apple. And he's also the person who's credited with coining the term user experience, which is such a huge field today. So we spoke to Don Norman, and this is what he had to say about our courses, our faculty, our curriculum, our you know ethos, our foundation, what we are doing here at Flame University. So I'm going to play that short clip for you. Thank you. That was um, that was very inspiring. Um, I thought that your presentation was wonderful. Thank you. And it's the best. I've talked to a lot of people looking for help, but they look for help in small ways and often incremental. And what's nice about flame and and uh, and what you are doing is you're starting basically from zero. Yes. That gives you a lot more freedom. And if your university will support you, you're going to tr you're going to introduce design in a completely different way than anybody else is doing. I would like to share it with my colleague uh, Carl Riedenberg. Carl is a vice president of IBM in design, yeah. and I are actually writing. We are leading the future of design education program. Yes. Yeah. And we are writing a, a last, we are almost finished. And so we are writing, Carl and I are writing a summary chapter of what, what is, what we left out. And what we left out of this future design education program is are many of the points that you are speaking to. Um, and I think there's a real possibility to do this in conjunction with other forward looking thinkers. So, uh, for example, uh, I know that both Google and Microsoft have very good research centers in India. Yes. And those would be great people. Uh, am I interested? Yes. Do I think you are in the, in an exciting new direction? Yes. Do I think it will be important first for, for your school? Yes. For India? Yes. And then for the world? Yes. It will be a good model. Oh. Um, Actually, first, you have succeeded in what you wanted to do. What you wanted to do was get me excited by what you're trying. So you have succeeded. So, so he came forward to help us. And uh, he is right now, he has left everything else. He's an 86 year old man. He doesn't do anything else. But he still willingly came forward and is part of the advisory board of School of Design at Flame University. And this is the only association that he has right now. And there are other people who are equally kind of icons in the world of design, which are also part of our advisory board. 
So we have Enigio Matthews. Enigio Matthews is now the Dean of Illinois Institute of Technology, Institute of Design, which is one of the top five design schools globally. We have Simona Masti, and Simona Masti is going to be visiting us next month. She is the co-founder of Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design, again, one of the top five design schools globally. We have uh, Deepak Menon. Deepak Menon is the Vice President of Design and Research at Microsoft. So he is the top boss of Microsoft in design in India. And we also have Ashwini Deshpande, who herself is an icon in design and has a very successful uh, design studio based sort of Pune called as Elephant Design. I, so this is what we have for you today. Thank you so much for your attention. And I'm kind of happy to take any questions that we have right now. So that was phenomenal, uh, Professor Ramit, and I could see some of the parents and students, uh, you know, uh, reflecting to what you were sharing. And uh, while we have the professor with us, I would really encourage uh, people to maybe raise their hand. We'll ask you to come live to, uh, you know, ask your question. So um, uh, Anishka, do you see any questions here? I think we have yes. raised hand. Maybe we could allow uh, that person here. Sure, we could do that. And after that, we have two to three questions in the chat for the okay, professor. Sure. So we'll take sure. Yes. Sure. So who's raised their hand, ma'am? Yeah, somebody had raised a hand and I'm so sorry we couldn't let you in because professor was really, uh, you know, sharing important information at that time. But yeah, someone had raised. So, hand. yeah. Yeah, so maybe till then we could just take the question from the chair. Sure. So uh, one question is that, so for IB board, or I think for any board, is there any recommended combination of subjects that they need to get into the BDES program that would make it easier for them at the university? No, no, there is no specification in terms of recommended subjects that we have. What applies to our current liberal education programs also applies to the BDES program. Right. And is it important for the student to be good at coding? Because there will also be some technology-oriented aspects in designing. That is a good question that has been asked. I wanted someone to ask me that question. So when you saw most of those projects that I showed in my presentation, especially the last one, you wouldn't believe that those four girls right, who worked on this project didn't even have science in their 11th and 12th standard. Right? right. So I have... I have I, I am not a coder. I am not an engineer. I have a BDES, I have a MDES, and I have a PhD. But if you look at my work portfolio, you will see any sort of technology that I work with. Right? So I think that because as designers, you don't need to code. You need to understand the concept of coding so that you can communicate what has to be done. You are not taking coder's job. Right? For that, you can do computer science. You have to come, you have to understand that, okay, this is the function of coding. This is how an AI, let's say, program works. And this is how I can use it to my benefit. And all that understanding is what we will give. And that's why we had the entire vertical of technological courses that we will offer. Right? right. But we're not, we're not making you computer scientist for sure. Right. So that question was asked by Ahana Rathod, and I hope that answers your question, Ahana. The next question is, um, Professor, if you could please amplify about the experiential courses under the major that we'll have under the BDES program. So experiential courses are again common to the entire university. So there are three experiential courses that we run. One is the Discover India program, which is our flagship program. We've been running uh, for that for the last 17, 15, 17 years now. So every year students form a group of 14 to 15, 12 to 14 people, and they choose one topic of their choice that they want to explore somewhere in the country, right outside their campus. So students actually, it's, a, it's almost a two semester long pro program where they kind of, you know, do research, text research, figure out the field trip. They plan everything on their own, right? They do the field trip planning on their own. There is a budget assigned to them they have to travel by road, take a train and go to that kind of, you know, place. For example, currently I'm a field mentor or a mentor to a DIP program, which are there. The group is looking at what is the work uh, welfare difference between the natural diamond polisher in Surat and artificial diamond polisher in Surat. Right. So what's the welfare difference? Right. So they've been preparing for to go on the field visit. 
for 10 days they will go on the field understand that subjects come back and prepare a report prepare a documentary right so that way we are able to expose our students to the ethos and realities of india right and also make them little more empathetic towards surrounding what is happening that is one second we have also a very interesting program called as a development uh, activity uh, immersive development activity program It's yes yes dap right yeah. yeah which is about that every student mandatorily has to work with an ngo right which to us and which to design is an amazing thing right because most of the time when you will go to an ngo it will be filled with design opportunities like okay. if you if you look at that visually impaired project that i showed you that was with an ngo right and when i so mecca for designers yeah it is it is a mecca for designers right even the discover india program is a mecca for designers even the dap is a mecca for designers then we have the last one as a summer immersion program which is a typical internship that you know our students do do with a corporate house right so these are the three essential you know uh, experiential learning programs which is mandatory for every single student who graduates from flim right sir so a lot of people had a similar sort of question where they were asking that after pursuing the bds at flame university what kind of advanced education should they be looking for for better job prospects so what all can they look for in their masters after doing bds so you could flame most if you i mean if you go to our website and see a lot of success stories about our alumni you will find our alumni have you know uh, transfer to top university globally right so either you want to you know progress into a masters in design in a top university like we have had cases where student has done a minor in design and is currently studying in one of the top two universities globally and then you can imagine what a major in design students can kind do right so you could actually choose to you know do a master in design and then you could do in different fields you could make it more business concentrated you could make it more technology concentrated you could make it more service concentrated whatever right but we are what is brilliant that we are also leaving an option open tomorrow that you want to do an mba so you already have a minor in management or a marketing you want to do little bit something in clinical psychology right or something around psychology or something or research you have already a minor in psychology so you will get a preference right which means the option students will have in terms of doing a masters after this will be much more than doing any other without a major minor degree program also you know and i saw a question where somebody was asking whether you should have uh, fine arts uh, uh, to be able to uh, you know will will they be Uh, preferred in this kind of program, someone with fine arts or without fine arts. So I think you answered the question generally, but uh, specific to fine arts. What are your thoughts, Professor? So I don't think that we need someone who can paint, right? I we want to prepare designers who can think, think, right? And we will give them skill set to communicate that thinking into something that people can understand. that's all we need to do you need to be able to be good thinkers and you need to be able to communicate what are you thinking and be able to make something out of it i think those are skills which are which can be acquired i understand that painting as a skill might not be you might not be able to acquire but we are any which way not making you painters right we want you to think we want you to think about good things we want you to think about good ideas right and you can doodle and draw and that much of course we will teach in the classroom how to doodle and draw 